Hello everyone, um, today's video is just going to be me going over these questions from yesterday. I posted after you watched the videos, you should have watched all four videos on our new YouTube channel. Um, you can be looking there for updates from us, from your algebra teachers on like a day to day basis. So today's video is just going to be going over these questions. The first question we had um, was x squared minus 5x minus 14. If you've been watching your videos, we should, this should just be a review for you. I'm going to be just going over the cross method. Step one, I'm always gonna look for um, the GCF. I'm gonna see, do these share anything? And I have an A value of one, so that should be pretty much, you know that they don't share anything then. There's no GCF for this problem. After that, we're gonna label our A value one, our B value, and our C value. And then we're gonna fill in our cross here. A times C would be one times negative 14. B is negative five, okay? And then now I'm going to look for how are ways that I can multiply to get negative 15 that I can add and get negative 5. So I'm going to think of all my factors for 14. It's 1 and 14, 2 and 7. I don't think there's any other ones. And then now I'm going to think which of these is most reasonable for me to get to 5. 1 and 14 will never get me to 5, so then that has to be 2 and 7. I know 2 and 7 then have to be my factor pair. But now I have to figure out what sign should be negative in order for me to get negative 5. Should I have two plus seven? Should I have two minus seven? Should I have seven minus two? What should be, or negative seven minus two? Which one of these would give me the right answer? Two plus seven is nine, so I know that one's out. I need negative five. Two minus seven is negative five, so so far that one's working. Seven minus two is positive five, doesn't work. And negative seven minus two is negative nine. That doesn't work either. So then I know my signs here should be positive two, and negative seven. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that in. Positive two, negative seven. And then I divide by my A values, divide by one X, divide by one X. I get my zeros of one X plus two, one X minus seven. And then I find my zeros are at negative two, positive seven. And I now know that my graph crosses through here at seven and negative two, and then I get a nice Okay, now for question number two here. We had x squared minus 36. And if you watched the videos yesterday, this was the question that is missing the b value. I'm used to seeing ax squared plus bx plus c. And now I can notice here, I actually have no x term. I have no b term here. So I'm gonna do the same process though. Check for a GCF. See my a value is one. I have nothing I share between one and 36. So then I just start with my labeling. a is one b is zero since i have no b term and c is negative 36. fill in my cross here a times c is negative 36 and then my b value is zero okay so now i'm looking for ways i can multiply to get negative 36 and add to get zero so i'm going to think of all my factors of 36 1 36 2 18 3 12 4 9 6 and 6. That should be all off the top of your head. If you know your multiplication charts, this should be no problem for you list listing fa factors like that. Now I'm gonna look to see which one of these is most likely to add or subtract to get zero. One plus 36, one minus 36, never gonna be zero. Two and 18, never gonna be zero. Three and 12, never gonna get to zero. Four and nine, never to zero. So my easy factor pair should be six and six. Now I need to figure out how should my signs be. I need negative 36, which means I need a negative times a positive and I need to add or subtract to get zero. So then my only option here should be six minus six. I could play with my signs here and you'll see why. Six minus six gives me zero. Oh, whoa, whoa. Six plus six gives me 12. Negative six minus six gives me negative 12. So my factor pair here has to be six and negative six. Okay, I fill those in. I can double check right here. Six times negative six is negative 36. Six minus six is zero. So I know my factor pairs are right there. Then I divide by one X and I get one X plus six, one X minus six, and I get my zeros of negative six and positive six. So that means on a graph here, one, two, three, four, five, six, I got a zero there, one, two, three, four, five, six, I got a zero there, zero there, and then I can draw my graph. That is factoring with a no B value. Okay, number three now. We have 2n squared plus 3n minus 9. Okay, here my a value is bigger than 1. So I have to first check again. Do I need to factor out the GCF? So I'm going to look at the numbers here. 
do 2, 3, and negative 9 share any number by division? So I need to think. Do 2, 3, and negative 9 share anything? And the answer should be no, because 3 is not divisible by 2, and 9 is not divisible by 2. So you should know you have no factor pair there. Okay, so then since we have no GCF, we'll just start by labeling our A value as 2, B is 3, C is negative 9. Fill in my cross here. A times C, so I have 2 times negative 9 gives me negative 18. And then I have positive 3 as my B value. So now I'm looking for ways I can multiply to get negative 18, all the ways in the world that you can multiply to get negative 18, that you can also add or subtract to get 3. So let's make our factor pairs here. 1 and 18, 2, 9, 3, 6. Any other ones? No? Okay. And then those are all the factor pairs here. Now I'm going to look. Which of these look like I can multiply to get 18, but also add or subtract to get 3? No way from 1 and 18 am I ever going to get to 3. No way between 2 and 9 am I ever going to get to 3. That means that 3 and 6 has to be my factor pair. Now let's go ahead and play around with signs. So I need to get positive 3. So I can do 3 plus 6. I can do 3 minus 6. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 3 minus 6. I could do negative 3 minus 6. And then I could do, what's the one I'm missing? 3 plus 6 or minus 6. And I could do 6 minus 3. Okay, then let's see which one of these is going to give me positive 3. 3 plus 6 gives me 9, that's out. 3 minus 6 gives me negative 3, that's out. Negative 3 minus 6 gives me negative 9, that's out. That means 6 minus 3 is the only one that works. So I'm going to fill in positive 6, negative 3. Okay, and then here's the new part that we, don't, we haven't maybe seen as much. My A value is 2. So I'm not dividing by 1x, I'm dividing by 2x now. And then now I need to check, can I reduce either of these fractions now? 6 divided by 2, I can reduce. This can become now 3 over 1x. 3 over 2 doesn't reduce. So then now I have my new factor pairs that I'll be writing in factored form, which are here. This one will come down to be 1x plus 3, and this one will come down to be 2x minus 3. This one I could flip the sign of. This one I have to set equal to 0. Add 3. 2x equals 3. I get x equals 3 over 2. Then I have my zeros there. Okay, guys, um, number 4 now. We have negative 6a squared minus 25a minus 25. I see my a value here bigger than 1 again, so I need to check for a GCF. And, huge thing here, I have a negative. Like Mr. Williams said in his video, you cannot have a negative, so you always have to factor that part out. So I know for sure I'm going to have to factor out a negative. And then now I'm going to think, okay, do 6, 25, and 25 share a number by division. 6 is divisible by 3. 6 is divisible by 6. 25 is not divisible by 3. So that means that this has no GCF. So all I can take out is my negative. So I'm going to be careful here. Since I have a negative divided by negative, this now becomes a positive 6. I have a negative divided by a negative. This now becomes a positive 25a. And a negative divided by a negative gives me positive 25. Okay, and then now I'm going to label my A, B, and C. A is 6, B is 25, C is 25, and I draw my cross. Okay, um, let's go ahead now and multiply. A times C is 6 times 25 is going to give me 150. And then down here, I'm just going to have my, fact, or my B value is 25. So now I'm thinking of all the ways I can multiply to get 150, and that's a lot more ways that I can now add to get 25. And what I recommend doing is you just take your calculator and you start guessing and checking if you can't think about it or you can't find it in your head. So I have 1, 150. Let's see what 150 divided by 2. I have 75 and 2. 150 divided by 3. 53. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 4 doesn't go unevenly, 5 and 30, let's keep going just in case, by 6, 6 and 25, 7, uh, let's do 150 and 10, and we'll get 10 and 15. Okay, so this is a good amount of factor pairs here, so now this one is a little bit trickier, we have to do a little bit more thinking here. So I need to multiply to get 150 and add to get 25. 1 times 150, never going to add to get 25. 75 and 2, never going to get 25. 50 and 3, 
never going to get 25. 5 and 30, I can consider that one. 10 and 15 as well. Let's think about 5 and 30. How would I get 25 from 5 and 30? I would have to subtract 30 minus 5. If I had to do 30 minus 5, that becomes 30 times negative 5, which would give me negative 150. And my A times C value is positive, which means that this pair can't be out. Because in order for me to get 25 from that pair, one of my numbers has to be negative. And a negative times a positive is always a negative, and I know I need a positive. So that means 10 and 15 has to work, because 10 plus 15 is 25. We continue now. I know my factor pair is 10 to 15. Divide by your A value. Divide by your A value. And then now we reduce. 10 over 6 is both divisible by 2. So I get 5 over 3x. And on this side, they're both divisible by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So then I get my new factors pairs of 3x plus 5 and 2x plus 5. Okay, last problem, guys. Um, five. We have 15n squared minus 27n minus 6. Okay, another a value we see that is bigger than 1. So I need to be thinking, should I factor out something? Between 15, 27, and 6, can you think of a number they're all divisible by? Let's talk about 15. I know 15 is divisible by 15. I know 15 is divisible by 5. I also know 15 is divisible by 3. So let me check to see, are any of these two numbers also divisible by 5 or 3? 27, not divisible by 5, but is divisible by 3. 6, not divisible by 5, but is divisible by 3. So that means my GCF here should be 3. So now I'm going to undo that property, that distributive property. 15 divided by 3 is 5n squared. 27 divided by 3 is negative 9n. And 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. Okay, now I have my new a, b, and c value. So my a is 5, my b is negative 9, my c is negative 2. I can draw my cross now. A times C, 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. My B value is negative 9. Looking for ways I can multiply to get 10, negative 10, and add or subtract to get negative 9. My factor pairs of 10, 1, 10, 2, 5. Okay, so now let's look. Realistically, how, what's the only one that I can even get close to being negative 9? That is 1 and 10. 2 plus 5 is 7, 2 minus 5, never going to get to 9. So now let's play around with my signs here. I have 1 plus 10, 1 minus 10, negative 1 minus 10, and negative 1 plus 10. Okay? 1 plus 10 is 11. I need negative 9. 1 minus 10, negative 9. Negative 1 minus 10, negative 11. Negative 1 plus 10, positive 9. So I know this one's out, this one's out, this one's out. My only answer is this one that gave me negative 9. So I have 1, negative 10. Okay, now I divide by my a value. My a value is 5, and I always put an x, 5, and an x. This one can't reduce. Over here, though, 10 divided by 5, negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2, and I keep the 1x underneath. So now I have my new factors, 5x plus 1, 1x minus 2. From there, I can find my zeros. Um, if you're having questions over here with my with my signs and what I'm doing here, I'm literally just changing all of the signs into every possible combination I can think of. Because I know one of those combinations is going to give me negative 9. So this part here you must think about. If you're going to sit there and give up, that's on you. You need to be the one putting in the work that's trying to figure out all the ways that I can play with my signs and get it to match what I need it to be. Um, that's it for the cross method practice. Later today I'll be also uploading um, a practice. Please make sure you view the videos and you're keeping up with your classwork.